Hi, welcome to Vegan Land. So this is Ronnie Lee's take on the anti-terrorist government strategy in the UK, which has actually been used against vegan activists quite a lot. Hope you enjoy it and find it as amazing and interesting as I did. Today, we've got someone really exciting and really knowledgeable to talk about the prevent strategy. We've talked to the Vegan Society, to Jeanette Rowley about prevent. And now we've got Ronnie Lee, the legendary Ronnie Lee. Introduce yourself, Ronnie. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Ronnie. I suppose I'm best known for being one of the founders of the Animal Liberation Front and um, for having spent about nine years in prison for ALF activities. Although that was quite some while ago. And, and, and now my main focus is, is very much on vegan outreach. I think vegan education is a really fundamental and vitally important part of the animal liberation struggle. So that's very much my focus these days. Just so that um, people know what the prevent strategy is, that's something that part of the UK government has sort of like brought in. It's generally aimed at, I think, people that are sort of like teaching or dealing with um, younger people, vulnerable people, so-called, in some sort of way, and to ensure that they don't get radicalised and um, turned into extremists. And this is aimed, you know, at apparently sort of like Islamic uh, jihadi type of people, right wing kind of like fascist kind of people, and also vegan kind of people which is why we're doing this this sort of like conversation here have you come across it yes i mean i i heard about it fairly fairly vaguely and i immediately as soon as i heard about it i kind of immediately started thinking well <laughs> they're bound to they're bound to try and use this against uh, animal liberationists and, and how are they going to do that because that's kind of what they've always done with with things like that of course we're now finding out that it is actually being used against um vegans in some ways and on, on some occasions and i'm not at all surprised about that um, I've, I've kind of done a bit of research into it since since then and, and in my research there are some that there are some examples although it's mainly to do with you know what might be called islamic extremism and right-wing extremism there are some examples in the material that includes animal rights or animal liberation it's a it's a small part of it but there are some examples of that is that the symbols Ronnie? you know like the in, 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 in terms of I, I, i've looked at some of the course materials used by um some of the schools that are being used as an example for what other schools can use. There were a couple of examples in there that kind of featured um, animal liberationists. There was a cover from a, um, an animal liberation magazine where there were people in balaclavas and they had um, bolt cutters and that kind of thing. It looked like they're about to break into an establishment of some sort. That was one. And the other one was a press cutting from, there was a case some years ago where some anti-vivisection campaigners were charged with um, digging up the grave of a woman who was a relative of the owners of a farm that bred guinea pigs uh, for animal experiments. I think it was two or three guys ended up being sent to prison for this. This is going back maybe 15 years ago they'd used a, 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 a press cutting from that about how horrific it was that people had desecrated a grave in the name of guinea pigs rights that was kind of the gist of what the headline was there was kind of no text with it but that was like just one of the slides that obviously would be used in a presentation to students to indicate that 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 kind of behavior was what would be regarded as um, extremism. Were I in that class, I'd immediately <laughs> question that and say, well, what, what is most extreme? You know, you know, digging up someone who's already dead and doesn't feel anything or torturing living creatures, which is the most extreme. This is like a really a false example of what is extremism. That, if, if I were a student in that class, I, I, I would challenge that. But of course, immediately you've got this thing about like, you know, 
it's not extreme to it's not extreme to torture guinea pigs, but it is extreme to dig up a dead body. Now, it may not be, be particularly pleasant um, for somebody to dig up a, a, a dead body, and that may not <laughs> may not have been a very good tactic. But nevertheless, the the the, um, the torture of living creatures is is a far more extreme activity, in my opinion, and and also. If we analyse the situation rationally, it's a far more extreme activity, but it wasn't being portrayed as that. Well, I completely agree with you, but I mean, this is really what we're up as sort of like up against as vegans and sort of like animal activists. You know, the sort of like the rhetoric and the, you know, the 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 the, the values of the dominant culture, which is pumped out with this kind of like propaganda. You know, so I'm a hundred percent on board with you. We're saying that this isn't the first time when you. Of that this has happened and it's part of a historical pattern and when you just to be clear when you're talking about they you're talking about the state the powers of the state aren't you yes 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 or, or the particular state that we kind of um live under at the moment and 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 the values the ideology of that mm. of, of that mm. state yes i mean this there's been a whole history of, of repression of um the animal liberation movement and there's also been history you see the the kind of prevent strategy the example of something being pre presented in a way that would be acceptable to almost everyone that yeah you know nobody nobody wants children to be turned into um right-wing terrorists or to be t turned into kind of you know jihadis that are kind of running around London stabbing people of course nobody wants that to happen and and so there will be general public support for something like the prevent strategy but what tends what what, what happens and what is happening is they're using that to sneak in other things in particular the repression of animal liberationists you know the repression of, of veganism and the idea that animals should be liberated from human tyranny and and that's kind of done under 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 the cloak of it um of it being about something that that most people find acceptable although it's it's small compared with um, i mean the, the, you know the overall emphasis of the prevent strategy is uh, against uh, what might be called islamic extremism and uh, right-wing extremism you know you know like 99 percent of it is to do with that but nevertheless, there is a small percent that kind of seeks to deal with, you know, um, with animal liberationism. And that's kind of, that's what's worrying. This isn't the first time that um, that sort of thing has happened. There's a whole history of that kind of undercover of something else. There's a whole, there's, there's a kind of whole, whole history of that as part of the whole history of repression against the animal liberation movement. For instance, um, and the laws against stalking were, were brought in not really all that long ago. The reason those laws were brought in because there was lots of publicity about women being um, followed by guys, you know, a guy hanging about outside a woman's house, perhaps their ex-partner or just someone who'd taken a you know, fancy to a particular woman or hang about with Harris and would follow them. There wasn't really a law to cover this and, and, and people um, were obviously very concerned about that. And, and because of public concern, laws were, were brought in to deal with this. But then those laws were used against animal liberationists. They were used against people who straighted outside the homes of animal experimenters, for instance, where this was, was like kind of a regular thing those people could be charged and were charged under the anti-stalking laws because though technically those laws covered that sort of activity but those laws weren't brought in to deal with that at all that wasn't the reason the public the public didn't want those laws brought in to protect people who tortured animals they wanted those laws brought in to protect mainly to protect vulnerable women that was kind of one example of how, how that was used um, and it's been used in the case of already existing laws as well for instance with blackmail now it, um, people think of blackmail as, as, as maybe a case where a, a, a guy's got some dirty photos of another guy and says to him unless you pay me a thousand pound I'm going to show 
these photos to your wife. The showing of the photos in isn't unlawful. It's saying, I'll do something unless you do something you don't want to do, basically. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the kind of simplified essence of blackmail. But it's been used against um, animal liberation activists, uh, mainly anti vivisection campaigners. They've ended up getting really long prison sentences. So 11 years in prison, for instance, um, one person got after being charged with blackmail. This was to do with the Shack campaign, the campaign against Hines and Life Sciences, where people were, were, were basically saying to the suppliers of, of HMS that if you, if, if you don't stop you know, supplying um, products or services to Hines and Life Sciences, we will kind of make your life un, un, unpleasant, in other words. But, but that could be just as sim- simple as having doing demonstrations outside the place or something like that. So uh, that law of blackmail was used in a way that was was never was was never intended. It wasn't that law wasn't um, put in place for, for that reason, but because it could technically be used in that way, it was used. It was used in that way, and this is the way that the state will get public support for something, because um, ostensibly that 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 law that activity is being used to curtail something that everyone you know agrees or 99 percent of people agrees you know should be curtailed but then under the cloak of that it's used against animal liberationists some people might say well aren't you just being a bit paranoid there you know this is a sort of like a genuine attempt by you know the government of the uk the prevent strategy i'm talking about to actually, you know, keep younger people safe, you know, and it's all legit. Um, what, what, what was it about it? I mean, you, you've mentioned the historical side of things, but when you first heard about the Prevent Strategy, what was it about it that started to ring the alarm bells? It was because of, because of how, this, uh, how, how the same thing had, had been done before. How, you know how, how something that seemed very publicly acceptable and on the face of it was 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 being done to prevent something that almost everyone was opposed to and and, and which was quite rightly uh, needed to be needed to be stopped that was then used against animal liberationists and so as soon as i heard about prevent i thought ah i wonder how long it will be before this is used against people trying to spread an animal liberation message and, and you know for those people to be you know fall within the cat- category of extremists and, and we have examples of that already happening well indeed yes i mean people that have gone to a school and you know maybe tried to sell some biscuits or cakes and you know some some very sort of like innocuous examples people that have had their jobs up for you know looks like threatened you know um so you're absolutely right and do you think this is part of like a a sort of like a slow erosion by the state of people's sort of like freedom to be activists oh yes i mean uh, uh, er uh, that erosion's been going on for um for a long time uh, and has happened in different ways kind of happened first of all with the use of um conspiracy charges if we go back to or oh, probably 40 years ago or so, um, the use of conspiracy charges against people was very, very rare. And whenever it was used, it, 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 there'd be a, a, a huge outcry from um, civil liberty organisations about the use of conspiracy because um, conspiracy isn't, if someone's charged with conspiracy, they're not charged with actually doing anything, they're charged with planning to do something. And the evidence for that can be um, pulled together from all sorts of things that, uh, standing alone, are, are, are not at all illegal. There's a kind of high risk of someone being wrongfully convicted when when they do that, and it's like kind of th- or, or like thought crime, almost like thought crime, because it's to do with it's not to do with doing anything; it's to do with planning to do something. And it, and it's far easier to get a conviction because they just 
pull together all these diverse pieces of evidence and say, well, look, this shows that this person was planning to do something. It began to be used more and more frequently. I mean, I, I was charged with conspiracy uh, in um, 19... Well, I stood trial in 1987. Um, I was arrested in 86 on conspiracy charges. And, and, and one of the charges I, I was on was actually conspiracy to incite people. In, in, in other words, it was kind of t- two steps removed from actually physically doing it, anything myself. You see. From, from, from then, really, from that time in the mid-80s, um, conspiracy has been um, used really frequently against um, animal liberationists. I mean, the, the people who were sent to prison um, for shack activities um, were charged with conspiracy to blackmail, conspiracy to blackmail. So it didn't even have to be proved that they'd actually blackmailed anyone, just that they'd kind of planned, to, they'd found certain evidence that they said indicated these people were planning to blackmail someone, you see. So, so that that's kind of one of the ways in which the state has, um, sort to erode civil liberties, um, especially in, in connection with animal liberationists, because I think those those kind of charges have been used more against animal liberationists probably than anybody else. And that's kind of, that was like the kind of probably the first example of that kind of thing. The other thing that started happening was uh, it started in the eighties, where the police or or, or, or the state really um, set up um, special uh, police squads to investigate animal liberation activity and they've gone under um, a, a, a series of different names but basically it, it's to do with what they call domestic extremism what what they've done is is kind of very much focused on lawful activities you know taken um gathered data about people um who were involved in lawful protests and other lawful you know, animal liberation activities, you know, taken films and the, the photographs of demonstrations of protests, etc. And, um, you know, kept these in a huge, in a huge database. And the, the, the reason they claimed they were doing that was, oh, so we can identify people involved in unlawful activity. In other words, if, if, if there were images of, of, of people involved in um, something that was against the law, say that there'd been a photograph of people who'd broken into a laboratory and rescued animals and they were there you know, posing for a photograph, perhaps for media reasons, uh, what they would do is, is trawl through a whole load of photos and videos of demonstrations to, to see if there was anyone maybe wearing the same clothing. And I think they have, there's been at least one occasion where somebody has been convicted because of that, because they, they were able to compare images and identify their, you know, clothing. That it, it must have been something that was really quite unusual, but they, they managed to do that. But the kind of, the danger of it, and, and, and I think probably the, the underlying purpose of it, is to have all this data that could be used at a future time against people um if more repressive laws were brought in say that a law came in you know, restricting um you know res- res- restricting demonstrations or something i mean there are laws that restrict mm-hmm. demonstrations of course already um then it would be very easy to identify um the people involved and and, and also kind of easier to keep tabs on those people you know put those people under surveillance like like to say well you know which person appears most in those in these photographs and, and videos, and th- that person would be of special interest. So we'll kind of, you know, we'll put special tabs on that person, you know, uh, all, all this kind of much more sinister stuff. You see, so once again, they're presenting this in a way that's more acceptable. This is to catch people who are breaking the law, when in fact the kind of real purpose of it is much more sinister to, than that. Is to actually keep you know, information on people that are um, acting perfectly lawfully so that those people at some time, uh, repression can be used against those people at some time in the future. And that was the, you know, that's the kind of risk of that, that kind of 
of, of, of taking those images. And, and we, we see it all the time. And I was involved um, some years ago in a demonstration outside the um, Greyhound track at Reading, which thankfully is, uh, has been closed now for a number of years. Um, and we were just there holding banners and placards and, you know, a police squad turned up and started filming everyone and taking photographs. And I said, well, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> you know it's just standing here demonstrating peacefully and they said oh we're you know we're from the domestic we're investigating domestic extremism and i said well what are you, what are you talking about you know what's <laughs> how is this extreme i said what's extreme is you know those people in there racing the dogs and then you know a load of the dogs you know being killed by the dog racing into that's what extreme what we're doing is not extreme and they kind of just you, you know they didn't want to argue didn't want to talk about it but that was that was the kind of the, the, the level of um, demonstration that they were videos. People, you know, maybe about ten of us standing outside a dump track, and then on on you know on 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 demonstration on on the big animal rights marches in in London, for instance, uh, you'll see the police videoing and taking photographs. On the um, World Day marches, they do the same, and that's all to to gather this have this whole database of people. And 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 what's that for? You know, it, it it can't really be for anything apart from an idea that some repression might be used against those people at, at some time in the future. It's a Trojan horse, isn't it? You know, the whole sort of like yes. rent thing. You know, although it's obviously got, as you say, a legitimate, as it were, rationale. It it's got a much bigger sort of like sweep of potential. Yes you know, sucking up the dissidents, you know, and sort of like catching any sort of like dissidents at a sort of like an early stage. And as you say, totally keeping keeping tabs on them. Um, so obviously this is sort of like a, a major threat and, you know, your experience of, you know, decades of sort of like activism for animal rights and animal liberation, as of course, you know, you've actually been through the prison system. So, you know, that's really yeah. sort of like will have honed your focus as well. So, um, what do you think we should be doing about this as animal rights activists? You know, there must be something that we can do to counteract this horrendous repression. If we're looking at prevent, then there needs to be a clarification of what they're actually trying to prevent, really. They do actually use a definition of extremism when they talk about extremism with regards to prevent strategy. It's defined as um, vocal or active opposition to fundamental British values, including democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty, and mutual respect and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs. Right. Now that kind of sounds okay, but like if you kind of really think about it, well, okay, um, vocal or active opposition. Well, it, it's not. That, that doesn't imply anything illegal, of course. You can be vocal and active in a way that's perfectly lawful. Individual liberty. Individual liberty. So the liberty of someone to slaughter animals, to torture animals. Are we allowed to be vocal or active against that supposed liberty of a person to do those things? Mutual respect and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs. Does that include that we have to have respect and tolerance for the belief of someone who thinks that it's okay to eat animals, that it's okay to vivisect animals? And what does that really mean? And when you look at it like that, well, it's, it could be very, very wide in, in, in you know, its catchment area of, of people. And, and so the, there needs to be a closer definition of, of kind of what, what they're talking about. If it kind of has been used against um, people promoting lawful um, opposition to the, uh, the oppression of animals, then it can, needs to be categorically stated that, that that is not the purpose of it, that it's not that that, that isn't, doesn't fall within the ambit of of what they consider to be extremism that needs to be explicitly stated otherwise those things could be defined as falling within it and it looks like those things have already been defined as falling within it if you're promoting veganism then you're you're actually saying that um you know 
that there are, are, are beliefs that, that aren't acceptable. You know, the belief that it's okay to consume animals isn't acceptable. You're promoting anti vivisection You're saying that, you know, you know that people who carry out um, the activities of people that carry out um, animal experiments that that they that those people should not have the liberty to do that. You see, and all that could be could you know could be defined as like, oh that comes within that definition. You're prevent you're stopping someone's liberty. You're um, you, you're showing lack of respect for someone's beliefs. You see, so, so so really, I think that we kind of there does need to be a closer definition of this, so that it can't be used against vegans and can't be used against animal liberationists. If if what those people are doing is just, you know, promoting um, lawful activities, Ronnie right, always gives such deep insights into things. He doesn't just look at the surface, and I do find that amazing particularly in this case of linking veganism with terrorism. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. It makes you think, together we can organise to end the war on other animals. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to like and subscribe. Thank you for your time and attention today.